Daily Show. Uh, I go by the name of Charlemagne the God. Hello. That's right. Uh, I'm back for another week of guest hosting. When I left three weeks ago, I said I'd never come back to host as long as Henry Kissinger was alive. <laughs> and so here I am. Uh, we've got a great show for you tonight. Let's get into the headlines. Now, let's talk about jobs, the thing everybody hates going to until you lose it. <laughs> Last week, the number of Americans filing for unemployment benefits rose to its highest level in two years, and there's nothing funny about people losing their jobs, unless it's this guy. In a historic vote, the House expelling Congressman George Santos. He's the first House member removed from the chamber in more than two decades. The first to not be convicted of a crime in a hundred and something, 50 years or so. The George Santos saga is officially over. 311 members voted to remove Santos, 105 of them Republicans. George Santos began putting out his coat even as the vote to expel him was still underway. Within hours of his House colleagues voting to make him just the sixth member in history expelled from office. Crews were changing the locks on his Washington office doors. Damn, they wasn't playing with him at all. They weren't taking no chances, right? They changed the locks immediately. <laughs> Though I'm not sure that'll do anything. This guy stole money from a sick service dog. You think he wouldn't crawl through an air vent? Huh? <laughs> but yeah. That, my friends, is the end of former Congressman George Santos, and he knew it was coming, too. He put on his coat before the vote was even over. <laughs> well, let me correct myself. He put on a coat. For all we know, <laughs> there's another congressman like, somebody sold my coat. <laughs> now, look, this might be unpopular, but I don't think George Santos should have been expelled. Mm -mm. For two reasons. One, we were all safer when we knew where this dude was, okay? <laughs> Now he could be anywhere. He could be at Nordstrom using your credit card right now. <laughs> but more importantly, I don't think Congress should come before the court. You shouldn't be able to kick someone out for crimes they haven't been actually convicted of yet. And I'll tell you why. To get convicted in a court, it takes 12 ordinary citizens to judge you. And I trust 12 randos off the street way more than 435 Congress people. <laughs> When you really think about it, he just got fired by his coworkers. <laughs> I don't know if you want to set that precedent. Imagine if all our coworkers could vote on whether we should have a job. <laughs> We'd all be unemployed. <laughs> and look, I think it's very important to acknowledge a large part of why he was kicked out is that he's gay. Republicans don't f with that gay shit. Don't get quiet now, okay? <laughs> he could never be a full part of that club. Yes, he was a scam artist who stole and lied, but Republicans are ride or die with all kinds of lies and crooks. <laughs> I'm just saying, look at their track record. If you're LGBT, they'll make you GTFO. <laughs> oh, well, GTFO plus, okay? <laughs> Now, let's move on to another group of scammers who got caught scamming. If you remember back in 2019, a bunch of rich parents and celebrities got busted for faking their kids' college admissions. Yeah. And one of those celebrities was actress Felicity Huffman, who white people know from Desperate Housewives, and who black people, we simply don't know. <laughs> well, Felicity did her time, and now she's back on the streets to clear her name. This morning, Felicity Huffman is explaining publicly for the first time why she felt the need to break the law to get her daughter into college. It felt like I had to give my daughter a chance at a future. Um, and so it was sort of like my daughter's future, which meant I had to break the law. And I know hindsight is 2020, but it felt like I would be a bad mother if I didn't do it. The Oscar nominee paid $15,000 for someone to falsify the results of her daughter's SAT exam. She says in this that when the whole incident went down, she actually didn't even think it was real. Take a listen to her here. They woke my daughters up at gunpoint. Again, nothing new to the black and brown community. <laughs> Damn. Man, the poor woman is trying so hard not to be racist that she ends up sounding racist. <laughs> Nothing new to the black and brown community. They wake up with a gun in their face every day. <laughs> As if that's what we do for alarm clocks. <laughs> five, five more minutes, officer. I had a late night. <laughs> White guilt is crazy, man. Imagine a gun is pointed at your daughter and your first thought is Black Lives Matter. <laughs> 
Like, why are you even bringing black people into this? Are you trying to get your daughter into Howard or something? Like... <laughs> Felicity really needs to stop doing press about this because it makes her daughter look more and more like the dumbest mother <laughs> on planet Earth, all right? She's out here going, I know it was wrong, but I truly had no choice. How else could I help my incredibly dumb daughter <laughs> who, if I haven't mentioned it yet, is so stupid? <laughs> I am only as guilty as she is dumb, which is to say, <laughs> extremely guilty. <laughs> By the way, did y'all notice that her husband, William H. Macy, is not involved in this scandal at all? He's the dad, and he doesn't show up in the story ever. Police probably didn't even wake him up when they raided the bedroom. <laughs> Don't worry, Mr. H. Macy, this doesn't concern you. Go back to sleep. Shh. It just goes to show you sometimes it pays to be a checked-out father. <laughs> Again, nothing new to the black and brown community. <laughs> I can say that, okay? <laughs> and finally, we are less than one year away from the final presidential election in American history. <laughs> and we all know it's gonna be a choice between Donald Trump, Joe Biden, or hanging yourself in the voting booth. <laughs> but there are some voters who wouldn't mind other options, and a special event on Fox News last week gave us an idea of what that might look like. On one side, Ron DeSantis, governor of Florida, and guy who just wrestled a foul ball from a child. On the other side, <laughs> Gavin Newsom, governor of California, and the villain in a Muppet movie. <laughs> and here's how it went. A fiery face-off between two top governors with presidential overtones. Florida's Republican Governor Ron DeSantis taking on California's Democratic Governor Gavin Newsom. The governors clashed over border security. Newsom criticizing DeSantis's controversial move last year, sending migrants to Martha's Vineyard. You're trolling folks and trying to find migrants to play political games to try to get some news and attention so you can out-Trump Trump. And by the way, how's that going for you, Ron? You're down 41 points in your own home state. This is a map of San Francisco. <laughs> There's a lot of plots on that. You may be asking, what is that plotting? Well, this is an app where they plot the human feces that are found on the streets of San Francisco. And you see how almost the whole thing is covered. Now, now, Ron's not wrong. If you've been to San Francisco lately, I'm sure you've noticed a lot of shit on the streets. <laughs> and obviously, he's gonna keep track of it because he doesn't want to get any on his high heels. <laughs> but is this really a smart campaign move for DeSantis? He's like, America can't have a crazy old man as president. It should be me, a totally sane man who carries around maps of shit in his pocket. <laughs> for more on the debate between Newsom and DeSantis, let's turn live to D.C. with Ronnie Chang. <laughs> This broadcast got huge ratings for Fox News, but does it justify having this kind of debate? Oh, yeah, this debate was great, Charlemagne. We got to hear from the guy who's not going to be president and the other guy who's not going to be president. <laughs> I mean, this was a bigger waste of airtime than softcore porn, right? <laughs> Who doesn't know about regular hardcore porn? <laughs> These debates are just a bunch of desperate people having meaningless fights. And it's a cheap rating stunt, and quite frankly, America deserves better. Hmm, that's... That's interesting, Ronnie. Are, are debates a cheap ratings stunt? That's the subject of tonight's debate. Let's bring in Desi Lydic. Hey. Uh, Desi, Desi, your thoughts. You have 60 seconds. Wait, what the f is going on? Thanks for having me tonight, Charlemagne. As the daughter of a father, I believe this country runs on televised debates. Times like this, I think of my friend Rita, the daughter of a mother who works the night shift as a lunch lady in the cornfields. She cries herself to sleep every night thinking about Ronnie Chang. America, we can do better. Oh. Thank, you. Thank, thank you, Desi. Ronnie, your response. Who the is Rita. <laughs> what is going on? How, how, how did I get on a debate stage? 
<laughs> Guys, I'm not participating in a stupid debate about a debate. That's debatable. Look, <laughs> don't just take my word for it. Let's look at the numbers, Charlemagne. This is a map <laughs> of all the places in New York City where Ronnie Chang has pooped. <laughs> As you can see, it's alarming. Okay, okay, I have IBS, so what? This is none of your business, okay? Again, I'm not debating here, but if I was, this is just a cheap stunt. I guess Ronnie doesn't want America to know the truth. I urge all voters to visit RonnieDumps.com and see for yourself. Who cares where I pooped? Well, call me a constitutionalist, but I think the American people have the right to know that you pooped three times at the 9-11 memorial. That seems high, Ronnie. <laughs> Anything you want to say about that? I didn't poop three times, okay? One was a false alarm. <laughs> and stop, this is stupid. I have two random people arguing about this. You know what, Ronnie? I agree with you. You're absolutely right. We should bring in a third opinion. Welcome to the stage, Michael Costa. Michael, as an independent correspondent, your thoughts? Wait, we do not need Michael to step in here. Well, well, you know, well, of course Ronnie doesn't think so. In his world, there's only room for two sides in this debate. And look, maybe I don't fit the establishment mold. You know, 90% of my donations are $5 bills that I take from tip jars at coffee shops. But <laughs> I still deserve to be taken seriously in this debate. But instead, my voice is marginalized by the powers that be. Again, nothing new to the black and brown community. <laughs> Cops the win. I want to thank everyone for debating tonight. Desi, Ronnie, and Michael Costa.